As a person with autism, I'm a completely visual thinker. Words narrate the pictures in my mind. Well, visual thinking is to be much more like animal thinking. Animal thinking and animal cognition, it's sensory based. Thinking in pictures, thinking in smells, thinking in touch sensations. Also, fear is my main emotion. Many people with autism, fear is their main emotion. That's also a very important emotion in an animal like cattle. Cattle's a prey species animal that gets scared really easily, and I can really relate to that. One of the things about cattle is when they panic, they're gonna just all flock together, and it doesn't make them appear too smart. But actually, cows are a lot smarter than people think they are. Sometimes people leave these little chains hanging down. They'll leave a little chain like this hanging down, and the cattle won't want to come up to shoot. I mean, something like this, the cattle come in, they see that, they won't want to walk by it. Little things that sort of look like they shouldn't be there, cattle are afraid of that. Animals are hypersensitive to detail, to sensory detail. People tend to ignore detail. There's actually been some scientific research that shows the normal human brain uh, drops out the details. The autistic brain, you know, sees all the details. And animal life is uh, much more detailed, because so sensory-based memories are more detailed than word-based memories. The basic premise of the book is that animals do have emotions. And you start out with the four core emotional systems. You still have some people today that think that animals don't have emotions. And I go, well, that's kind of stupid to say that, because if you give a dog Prozac, it works on a dog the same way it does on a person. Fear, for example, is down here in the brainstem. It's a really, really primitive emotion. Circuits are fully mapped. That's one of the core emotions. Rage is another core emotion. And then seeking, you know, the desire just to get out and to explore, and then panic. The writing that I've done on animal handling has always been very practical. One of the things I've worked on is try to bridge the gap between the scientific studies that have been done on animal behavior and animal welfare and applying it out in the field. How can we actually implement something in a practical way? The problem I'm seeing today, and this is getting worse and worse and worse, is what I call abstractification. Too often you've got people where it's all policy, it's all abstract, and they haven't even consulted with anybody on the ground. They've never gone out and visited a farm, so they don't know what's going to happen with that policy when it's implemented. And we're losing the people working in the field, the practical implementer people. And this is something I'm very concerned about. And I have a long section in the book about who's going to be the next Jane Goodall. I'm getting older now, and I'm not able to work in the field the same way that I used to be able to.